All right, Al, thanks very much. Today marks the 75th anniversary of one of the a police-protected white riot that took place in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Despite the prevailing racism of the time, the black citizens of Tulsa had made a pretty good life for themselves shortly after World War I. But on the night of May 31, 1921, racial violence destroyed everything they had. Back in the early 1900s, Tulsa, Oklahoma was a city exploding with opportunity. But the discovery of oil, the money that flowed into Tulsa, made it one of America's wealthiest boom towns. Some of the town's newfound riches landed in the hands of Tulsa's black residents, many of whom worked for white employers. But because blacks were unwelcome in white-owned stores, they brought their hard-earned wages back to their own community, a community known as Greenwood. There they built up a thriving business district that was so successful, it was called the Black Wall Street of America. If you wanted to put up a business, that was a place to put it up. There were theaters, barbecue places, grocery stores, jewelry shops, shoe shine parlors. I mean, all black businesses, all up and down the Greenwood. And we had our everything in those days. We had our plumbers, our electricians, our builders. Everybody owned their own businesses and everybody was making money. Despite their relative prosperity, Tulsa's black citizens regularly felt the pains of racism. The Ku Klux Klan had a strong foothold in Oklahoma and lynchings were all too common. Yet no one was prepared for the violent turn of events that ended in a bloody riot of Tulsa's white population. It all started with the arrest of a black teenager named Dick Rowland. Though the charges were eventually dropped, Rowland was charged with assaulting a white girl. That afternoon, the Tribune, the Tulsa Tribune, which was the local paper at that time, uh, came out with the article about what happened and then said at the end, looked like there's gonna be a lynching in Tulsa tonight. That evening, several thousand whites gathered outside the courthouse where Roland was being held. As soon as the lynch mob began to gather downtown around the courthouse where Dick Roland was held, a group of black men, many of them World War I veterans, gathered themselves into cars and guns and went downtown to stop this thing. A white man tried to disarm a black vet. A struggle ensued and a shot went off. And at that point, the race riot was on. A mob of armed whites invaded Greenwood, looting stores and homes, and setting black Tulsa on fire. You could see the smoke and the fire, and you could hear the gun shooting. I said to my mother, I said, Mama, I said, we better get out of here, because I said, they, they're burning the place down on Cincinnati, and they're shooting one another. And I said, they're going to kill us. My mother said, here they come, here they come. And they came in the house with torches, and they set the house on fire. Oh, it was like a nightmare. Everything was in flames. Disarmed by Tulsa's white police force, black citizens were unable to defend themselves. The authorities detained about 60 white rioters, but none of them were ever charged. 6,000 blacks, meanwhile, were marched off to internment centers while their beloved Greenwood burned to the ground. There wasn't a building standing. When we went to where we lived, we knew where it was, but there wasn't anything around in any room but ashes. In a single day, Black Tulsa was reduced to rubble. All told, 35 blocks were destroyed, scores of people were dead, and more than 5,000 blacks were left homeless. To wake up and see nothing but ashes and buildings burnt to the ground, charred, you couldn't keep the tears back. Many of those who survived the riot had to endure a bitter winter with little more than a canvas tent to shelter them. But black Tulsans would not be defeated. They began rebuilding Greenwood even while the ashes were still smoldering. By borrowing and earning what they needed, black Tulsa rose again. By 1925, Greenwood was once again a thriving business district. You saw the return of the theaters, the return of the restaurants, and the chili parlors. There was a black-owned bus line. Greenwood rose again and returned to its earlier glories. Ironically, the Greenwood that had endured so much hate could not survive the changes brought on by the Civil Rights Movement. Desegregation and the move to urban renewal left Black Tulsa in decay. Today, Greenwood is attempting yet another comeback and drawing inspiration from the memory of years past. Memory is now recalled in a photo exhibit at the Greenwood Cultural Center, where a new memorial is planned in tribute to the courage and determination of the black Tulsans 
who still hope that Greenwood will rise again. It's quarter past the hour. We're going to shift gears in just a moment. Go outside and taste a couple of desserts.